time to pull up a chair. We've got another great story for you today in the R-Lounge. There's power in speaking up and holding people accountable. Today in the R-Lounge, it's not just about the paycheck. It's about being recognized for what you bring to the table. My a-hole boss took credit for my idea, so I exposed his disgusting behavior and got him fired. I, 32 female, have always had a good relationship with my boss. It took the form of a loose, casual relationship, which mostly came from his side. You see, he's a younger guy, 28 male, and treats everybody like they're one of the boys, regardless of age or gender. I never really took issue with it, even though it wasn't really my style. I've always believed that workplace conversation should be more formal, or at least polite. I didn't mind either way because we were an effective team. He was a good boss and I always did my best to be a productive employee. We rarely had any friction, and on the few occasions that we did, we managed to move past it pretty easily. Once in a while, he would make an inappropriate comment on my appearance, and sometimes he would try to make a move on me. I never took it too seriously because he always backed down when I firmly rejected him. He never seemed to take the rejections personally, so it didn't get in the way of our work relationship. Now, for some background about where I work, I won't say exactly where it is, but we're not exactly a large firm, and we're not small either. However, we often handle contracts for much larger corporations. We handle lots of projects for smaller companies too, but the funds from these large contracts are the lifeblood of our company. So when the opportunity for one of these contracts comes around, all priority immediately shifts to them. Recently, our company was invited to pitch a proposal to one of these large companies. The reward for this contract would make the company reach its target for the quarter, which was good for the company and good for us because it meant bigger bonuses all around. As you can guess, it was all hands on deck. The responsibility went to my boss particularly, and by extension me, to come up with a way to attract the client and make them choose our service. That wasn't easy. A lot was riding on this, so my boss and I spent a lot of late nights at work trying to come up with ways to pitch our company. Eventually, I came up with the bones of an idea. The idea wasn't fully fleshed out, but it was important to note that I was the one who came up with it. I told my boss about it, and he immediately saw the potential. We decided to focus all of our efforts on developing this approach. After a few more nights of hard work, we had something promising. Now, I'm not saying I did all the work. I recognize that my boss contributed to this proposal, and his contributions were not minor in any way. However, like I mentioned before, I was the one that had come up with the idea, and when it came time to refine it, I did as much work as he did, if not more. So I don't think it's wrong for me to want to claim credit for the idea, if not completely, then at least in majority. Eventually, the day of the big proposal arrived. Everybody was nervous, but I don't think anyone was as nervous as my boss and I. The company was depending on this contract, but in the end, today's success or failure would fall squarely on my shoulders and my boss's. When we entered the meeting room to present though, I was ready. All of the anxiety had faded from my body. I had my portions of the presentation ready and I had memorized the whole thing from beginning to end. After all, I'd come up with the core idea of the majority of the work. My boss had his portion of the work already as well. We made a solid team, or so I thought. When we sat down to start the presentation, I noticed my boss was acting a little bit different. He had an uncharacteristic swagger to him. He seemed confident, cocky even. I didn't think much of it at the time. Honestly, I thought he was just trying to put on some confidence to impress the clients, you know, typical male peacocking and all of that. But as we went through our presentation, I noticed my name didn't come up at all. He didn't give me much room to speak, either. When it was my turn to talk, he would keep pushing through and read my parts. That made me really mad, but I kept it together. He was up there, cool and confident, so how would I look if I let my face turn red or blew up and confronted him in the front of the client? The contract was too important to us, so I couldn't risk looking unprofessional and blowing things for the company. When the meeting was over, the client looked impressed and said they would be in touch with us soon. The entire company was buzzing with optimism, and there were pats on the back all around, especially for my boss. As soon as we left the room, I pulled my boss to the side and tried to keep my voice level as I asked him why he didn't mention my name or my contribution. He just smiled and said that it was the right move. You know the, how these guys are. They're pretty traditional. They won't take things seriously if they hear from a girl. I'll make sure you get your credit when the time is right. Based on the good relationship we had together, I chose to believe him, but it turned out the time would never be right. A few days later, my company won the contract, and the mood in the office was electric. Everybody was celebrating, and my boss was being hailed as a hero. My name didn't come up at all, though. 
Anytime people mentioned the proposal, they would talk about my boss's brilliant strategy. If anybody talked to me about it, they would simply commend me for assisting him. I couldn't believe it. This is how I was being treated after busting my butt to come up with a strategy that saved our company's quarter. I was furious, but I decided to approach my boss one last time to talk about getting the appropriate credit. You won't believe what this SOB told me that credit wasn't that important and that I should get over it. He said that what was important was that we got the contract and it didn't matter who came up with the idea. I think he realized he was being harsh after that because he tried to diffuse it with a joke about how I was still going to get a fat bonus anyway. That was when I realized my boss wasn't just being arrogant. He was deliberately trying to undermine me. He claimed credit wasn't important, but the truth was he was just trying to keep it for himself because he knew how important the win was for the company. But so did I. And that's why I couldn't let it go so easily. I told him that everybody was going to be getting a bonus and that he would probably be getting an even bigger bonus because of the brilliant strategy that he had come up with. I pointed out that he said credit wasn't important, yet he was content to claim as much of it as he could. This seemed to make him very uncomfortable. He shifted awkwardly and couldn't meet my eyes. Then he came up with an excuse and scurried away. Since then, things have been awkward between my boss and I. The conversation is no longer as casual as it used to be, and I've noticed that he finds it hard to look at me. I think we still work together somewhat effectively, but the rapport is not what it used to be. I might have ruined our relationship by asking for credit. When I told my friends about this, most of them said I should be happy to even get a bonus in the first place. They said the credit wasn't as important as I was making it out to be. After all, according to them, I was only going to work for a paycheck. I didn't see it like that though. I take pride in my work and I was really proud of my ideas I came up with for the proposal. Now I'm not so sure anymore. Did I do the wrong thing by demanding that my boss give me credit for my contributions to the proposal? You worked hard on that proposal and definitely deserve recognition for your contributions. It's disappointing when someone undermines your efforts, especially when it feels like they're taking credit for your work. Demanding credit for your ideas wasn't wrong at all. You were advocating for yourself and ensuring that your hard work was acknowledged. No one's going to advocate for us but ourselves. If anything, you've set a precedent for being taken seriously in your workplace, which is crucial for your future growth and success. Keep pushing for the recognition you deserve. Update. Well, there's a lot more to the story now. If you remember from last time, I was the person who was trying to get credit for their work from their boss. Some people said I was taking it too seriously and others said I was entitled to proper recognition for my efforts. Well, I should have been recognized for my efforts, but my boss was not on the same page. I brought up the issue to my boss two more times and each time he seemed uncomfortable and didn't want to engage the topic. At that point, I decided I was going to take matters into my own hands. Unfortunately, it was too late for me to actually get recognized for my work on the proposal. If I went around telling everybody that I was the one who was responsible for the pitch then got our company the big break that we needed, people would look at me as if I was trying to steal credit from him. It hurt me a lot, but I knew I had to let this go. However, I wasn't going to let my boss off the hook just like that. I think I mentioned in my previous post that my boss had a habit of talking to everybody super casually. He's not exactly the type of guy to go for proper workplace etiquette. Apart from the casual comments though, he's tried to come on to me several times before. I used to view these approaches as harmless since he usually backed down when I turned him down. Now though, I was going to use these advances to hurt him. A lot of these messages were the type of things that HR would frown on. They were distinctly against company policy. For example, sometimes he would ask me if I was still single, or he would remark that my body probably looked like dynamite under my work clothes. Like I said, I knew these were inappropriate, but I just ignored them as harmful flirting. They didn't bother me too much, but imagine how the C-suite would feel if they saw that their current star employee was making unwelcome comments to a subordinate. If he wasn't going to own up and share the credit for me, then I'd make him a take accountability on my own terms. I went through our messages and voice notes, marking down all the times he had made our inappropriate comments. Now that my boss had shown his true colors, the comments I'd once seen as harmless were making my skin crawl. It wasn't just casual commentary like I'd made myself believe. It was inappropriate and disgusting behavior, and it took him stealing my work for me to realize that he had been taking advantage of me all these years. I just convinced myself that this was harmless behavior so I wouldn't rock the boat. I knew I was sitting on a mine that could blow up his career with our company. A part of me wanted to give him one last chance to let him know what was coming if he wouldn't give me credit or at least ba basic respect. But it was too late. I'd given him enough chances. He didn't deserve any warning of the fate that was coming for him. Instead, I went straight to HR with all the evidence compiled neatly into a document. I knew they had a process for these kinds of situations, and after a nasty lawsuit a couple of years back, they had a zero tolerance policy in place. I watched the HR representative's face go from curiosity to shock 
as they read through the document. I made sure to explain that my boss had taken full credit for my work and that he had crossed professional boundaries on several occasions. They asked several questions, but my document was thorough. Nearly every question they asked, from whether I had proof that I came up with the idea to what I was wearing on the day he made a particular comment, was properly documented. When she was done, the HR rep assured me that they would take my accusations very seriously and that a full investigation would be opened. Over the next few days, the atmosphere at work was tense. My boss was very quiet, and he wouldn't come out of his office unless he absolutely had to. People were whispering a lot more as well. I just kept my head down and focused on my work. I knew there was a chance that I was going to face some backlash for this, but I stood fully behind what I did. If I was going to be singled out for standing up for myself, then so be it. Hell, they could fire me if they wanted. This whole debacle had disillusioned me with this office. About a week later, I got a call from HR. They told me that they had opened up an investigation into my boss, and they were interviewing several of my coworkers. He was currently on administrative leave. That explained the tense situation in the office. And sure enough, I hadn't seen my boss at all for the past few days. I just thought he had been holed up in his office. The real kicker was what came to light after the interviews with my coworkers. Several female coworkers confessed that he had been inappropriate with them as well. He had even dated and had a sexual relationship with one of them for a few months. He was looking at several violations now, and he had very little chance of keeping his job. One of my coworkers who had been interviewed by HR, Gloria, came to talk to me about the whole affair while we were having lunch. She said that he had been inappropriate with her as well, but she was too scared to say anything. She told me that I was brave for sticking up for myself, and before she left, she told me I had done good work on the proposal. Honestly, just hearing one person credit my contribution to the proposal was enough to make this whole mess worth it. That was all I wanted from the start. Now I finally got my credit and recognition, and my boss was very likely going to lose his job. He might not get that fat bonus he was talking about, but hopefully he'd be fine with a severance package. Gloria was only the first person to congratulate me on my work in winning us the contract. It seemed like word was starting to spread around the office as a result of the HR investigation into my boss. Honestly, I was there for it, even though it was an unintended consequence. I'd really just wanted to see my boss get what was coming to him. I'd never thought the truth about the presentation would come to light. I was still riding the high of my victory when I got a call from my boss. He was freaking out at me, telling me that he had lost his job simply because I couldn't play along. He said that it was normal to office politics for a senior employee to take credit for a project and that I was being hormonal. He said he had gone through it a few times himself coming up and that I was going to do that too when I was in his former position. I pointed out that he was fired for flirting with subordinates, not for stealing credit. Then I told him that nobody was sad to see him leave. He left a few angry texts on my phone after that, but I ignored them. He had nothing to do with me anymore. He was just angry and throwing a little tantrum that couldn't hurt me. I simply blocked his number and moved on. After the whole episode, things went a lot better for me than I expected. I managed to keep my job and a few people were annoyed that I had gotten my boss fired, but most of my coworkers either didn't really care or they were glad to see him gone. HR called me to their office one more time and they more or less offered to keep my job safe if I promised not to kick up a fuss about what had happened with my boss. I didn't have any beef with the company itself and I didn't want to paint a bigger target on my back, so I agreed that I wasn't going to pursue it further or bring up any legal action. I was a little annoyed that the company only cared about covering their butts through all of this, but the reality is that that's what HR is really for. They don't really care about resolving disputes between employees, they just make sure everything is handled in a way that keeps the company safe from lawsuits. I didn't really care about that, I just wanted to make my boss pay. I wasn't here to change the world, besides, I'd just gotten justice in my own way. What I learned from the whole experience is that you should always make sure your voice is heard. Never let anyone tell you that you don't deserve credit for your hard work, and if they won't hear you, raise hell until they listen. It's infuriating that your boss tried to downplay his behavior and make you feel like you were a problem. His attempts to deflect blame only highlight his own insecurities and misconduct. It's a huge step that Gloria and others are starting to speak out too. You've created a ripple effect that may lead to a healthier work environment for everyone. It's also great to hear that you received the acknowledgement that you deserve for the proposal, even if it came from an unexpected source. You should be extremely proud of yourself, OP. Have you ever experienced something similar? Share your stories with us in the comments below. And thank you for joining us today in the R Lounge. Be sure to like and subscribe and hit that notification bell so you don't miss out on our next video. Until next time. And put your chair back where you found it.